Welcome back to week one, minerals and geology introduction. In this video, video two, we are going to start discussing minerals. Um, so after this video is completed, you should be able to write the definition of a mineral. You should be able to list and describe the major physical and chemical properties of minerals and then explain how these mineral properties are tested. So basically, what's a mineral? Well, it's an inorganic solid um, that is naturally occurring. Uh, and you can look in your textbook for a um, more specific uh, definition that um, I explain it in a little bit more detail, but that's basically what a mineral is. And minerals are what make up the rocks that we're going to be looking at in the next two weeks. So what are the mineral properties? Well, um, we're going to kind of walk through these in a very similar way as you are going to in lab. So the first thing that we'll talk about is luster, and we'll get into color, hardness, streak, cleavage, and then some others. So the first one, luster, which is the um, way a mineral reflects the light. Basically what that is, is your luster can either be metallic or non-metallic. So basically, does it look like metal or not? So metallic things are going to be silver, gold, brass, things like that. Um, and it might help you guys to watch the lab prep video that I have posted in the lab materials. So some of the non-metallic um, things that you'll see might be earthy, kind of a dull look to it, powdery, or it might look kind of glassy, might be shiny. So some students can confuse the glassy look, the shininess, with the metallic look. And it's very important to know that metallic, it looks like metal. That's the main thing. Metallic metal has that appearance to it. The next thing uh, to look at is color. And color is something that um, can be deceiving at times. Uh, for instance, in this photograph here, these are all samples of quartz. They have the like, quartz can come in clear, white, pink, purple, black. Um, it can come in yellow. It can come in a lot of different colors. So color isn't necessarily a um, distinguishing feature, but you can look at the shade of your mineral. Is it light or dark? in color and that'll kind of guide you a little bit into your identification charts because some minerals are going to only have kind of the darker shades some are going to have the lighter some of them might overlap and that's okay your charts are going to have both on them so color is it light in color or dark in color if you want to list out the exact color on your sheets you can the next thing is hardness it, so basically you're going to take your sample and test it on a glass plate and also using your fingernail. Basically you're seeing, all right, is this mineral harder or softer than glass? Does it scratch the glass or not? And then um, is it harder or softer your fingernail? So can you scratch um, the mineral with your fingernail and get bits of it off on your finger? Um, or does it um, destroy your nail when you try that? So make sure you watch the lab prep videos. It'll, it'll kind of describe to you the correct procedures to do this in lab. The next thing you look at is what is called streak, and streak is the way a mineral looks, the color it looks like when it's powdered. Here you can see four different minerals and then the corresponding streak they each have. So uh, this gold one has kind of a brownish black gray streak. This silver one has a red brown streak, which is interesting. Uh, this other silver one has a silver streak. This red one has a red streak, and then this clear one has a white streak. Now, I did this on the countertop here because um, at the time I didn't have um, the darker um, grayish black colored streak plates. In lab, you guys are going to have both, so make sure if you try it on the white one, you don't see a streak showing up. That doesn't mean it doesn't have a streak. It's either harder than the streak plate or it's white. So make sure you try it on black streak plates as well. The next thing you'll look at is cleavage. Cleavage is the way a mineral breaks. So the internal arrangement of these minerals is set up in such a way that there are planes of weakness within its structure. And every mineral is going to be a little different. Some of them might have uh, somewhat similar ways that it's going to break based on those internal arrangements. 
Uh, so basically, you're going to be looking at these minerals and saying, yes, it has really good cleavage. I can see it. It's well defined. Or, no, I don't really see any cleavage in that mineral. Uh, you can also get into detail and talk about how many planes of cleavage a mineral has, the direction um, that those planes intersect with one another. If you have questions about that, we can talk about that in lab. Um, it's a little tricky to talk about in a PowerPoint. Uh, so it kind of helps to have the minerals right in front of you and your hands on them. But you're only going to be required to look at um, yes or no. Does it have cleavage or not? And so what we look for, and it's going to help you also to look at the lab prep videos for this as well, you can look for two different things. One, um, this mineral here breaks into these nice flat sheets. And you can see in this picture here and also up in this picture how the light is reflecting off of the top of those sheets all at the same time. <coughs> so one thing is look for a flat surface. If you don't have a flat surface, that doesn't mean that the mineral doesn't have cleavage. So take it in your hand, rotate it around, try to get the light to reflect off of the different surfaces. If you see one whole side reflecting the light at the same time, like you see here or here in this image, then that's telling you that yes, that mineral does have cleavage. Now you can have, all of these have cleavage. Um, this has one plane, this has two, these ones have two, these have three. So you can have a lot of different planes as well. Now sometimes y your uh, mineral might not be showing that cleavage breaking all off on a nice flat surface, but you'll see what looks like little kind of stair-stepped patterns on the mineral, and that's a sign that yes, it does have cleavage as well. And this will become a little bit more clear when you actually have the minerals in your hands in lab. The next thing to look at, and this helps to d distinguish between uh, the different types of feldspar, we've got uh, potassium feldspar, which is this top one here, and then we have plagioclase feldspar, which is this bottom one over here. Now, plagioclase feldspar has what are called striations. So, striations, you can only see these when you're reflecting the light off of a cleavage face. And here you can see how it kind of looks like you've got some s parallel scratches in the side of that mineral. Well, they aren't actually scratches, it's just the way this um, uh, internal arrangement of these atoms and molecules in this mineral uh, expresses it out um, for you to see. So, parallel lines that are only visible when the, you reflect the light off of a cleavage face. And then X solution lamellae are color variations that you can see on any side all over the mineral. It doesn't matter. You don't have to reflect the light off of it. They're just color variations. So very two very different things in these two different minerals. And this is the main way to tell the difference between the two of these. Now in lab, if you have questions, make sure you call me over. The next uh, thing uh, category is kind of others category, um, and this includes um, acid reactions. So you'll take a little a bit of a very weak hydrochloric acid. Don't worry, it won't burn you. Um, but don't eat it. Don't put it in your eyes. Be careful with it. Um, if you put a little drop of it on a mineral, if it starts to effervesce and bubble, that means that you have calcium carbonate present in that mineral. So this is a, a, a kind of a telltale sign for calcite. Um, if you have a mineral that is magnetic, and you have a, ma a magnet that can be attracted to it, that's a telltale sign that you have magnetite. Um, you can also smell a mineral, um, and you can taste minerals, but I highly discourage that. Ask me, does this mineral taste salty or not? And if I say yes, then you have halite. Um, some of them have a very distinctive smell, and usually its smell is going to be sulfur. And the last thing is what's called a crystal form. So does your mineral have a very distinguished crystal form to it? Does it look prismatic? Um, does it have this kind of dodecahedron shape? Is it boxy? Um, or does it have some other kind of um, geometric shape to it? And these crystal form, you don't always see this. Not every mineral has this. Uh, but it f happens when a mineral has a space to actually grow. So if there's a void space in a rock and the mineral has that extra room to grow in its natural form. And then you'll see that um, expressed in the mineral um, in some cases. Some minerals don't have it, but some do, and they're pretty neat. So that kind of goes through what minerals are, some of the physical and chemical properties of minerals, and then how we test for these properties. 
So we'll sign off, come back in the next video, and talk about classifying how minerals are formed and what they're used for.